Uh, our first presenter is going to be David Zhang, uh, showing off his Omni AutoGPT research bot. David, come on over. All right. Hello, everyone. So I want to show you guys uh, the product I just launched. It's called Omni. And uh, it's essentially it's an information retrieval agent that's sort of meant to find and process data for you on the internet. So what does that actually mean? Uh, so this is the agent, so it's sort of based on you know, the, um, the AutoGPT baby AGI architecture that sort of recently came out, it's been super popular. Uh, I, you know, I started working on Omni to solve a specific problem I have, which is I want to you know, have it navigate a web and find stuff, find information for me. So AutoGPT is a great architecture for this. Uh, but as I was building it, I essentially started rewriting it one, you know, one file at a time until pretty soon the entire uh, code base is rewritten. So this is basically a custom other GPT implementation for information retrieval. So wh why, uh, why information retrieval? Or why use other GPT for information retrieval? So uh, this is sort of, this is actually quite interesting. Um, if, if you sort of compare the uh, architecture of auto GPT versus the architecture of a database, you know, so on the left, I have my Omni architecture. On the right, you have a database. And you could, you could kind of, you know, you can kind of look at the big high-level boxes. You know, you have a user, submit a query, the query goes to the parser, parser goes to the planner, planner executor. In AutoGPT, this is sort of this recursive process because the, the data you're finding is unstructured, and after that, you sort of, uh, you know, the query uh, outputs. This is actually the exact same sort of architecture that you will see in a, in a normal database. I literally took this slide from I some, like, MySQL's website or something. So it's like literally exactly the same. So that, that's why I think it's just a, such a great architecture for information retrieval. Uh, so, so I launched it, you know, three weeks ago. Like, uh, like I kind of just tweeted it randomly as like a tech demo, and it sort of just blew up. Um, so, so far, you know, we have like 13K accounts. The craziest part is we actually have uh, 2,000 people on Discord, uh, which is pretty nuts. You know, like nothing motivates you more than 2,000 people on Discord sending you a feature request every day. <laughs> so. Okay, so let's, let's kind of dive into the product a little bit. So I'll actually just show you guys uh, the product. Um, so here, here's what it looks like. So you, you know, go to Omni.com. Here's our humble website. We could run a search live right now. Uh, do anybody have any suggestions for what to find? If not, okay, so now I'll, just, I'll just do a search for, let's say, find, let's say find all the best AI events in So you know, so now this agent's kicked off. It's gonna you know make a plan, and it's gonna start just navigating the web on your behalf and collect data and you know and consolidate it for you. It actually takes five to fifteen minutes, so we're not gonna sit through all that. Uh, but I actually thought what would be cool is I could show you guys some of the uh, results from uh, kind of our actual users. I think those are actually pretty interesting. So here's one use. I mean, the really simple use case is you know you could use it to sort of generate podcast script for you, right? So you could have it. Uh, uh, see all the latest posts on Hacker News and process it into a podcast script. So this is like a, your sort of default auto GPT demo, right? Now you can kind of go a little bit deeper here. So let's let's look at this one. So this is actually a pretty very interesting one, and this is sort of where auto GPT and that sort of database architecture really excels, because you could start doing these multi-step queries. So you know you could say find all the news, uh, find all the posts on Hacker News that's a GitHub repo, and then go into each GitHub repo and then summarize the repo and give me the URL. So you can have these multi-step queries and start chaining them up, almost like a database query. So this is kind of where you kind of start seeing sort of the power of using AutoGPT for information retrieval. Uh, this is actually a very cool one. So this is um, just for another user. Uh, so, so he wants to find um, wind turbine for some random county in the UK. So you can kind of see how, you know, how AutoGPT actually, um, or how Omni actually uh, figured this out. Uh, and it actually started by looking at the average energy consumption of that exact county in the UK, and then figured out the wind conditions, and it used that to calculate what your energy consumption is and how much energy your wind turbine will actually produce, and use that to filter out the right turbine. So there's actually a little bit of critical thinking in here, right? It's, it's able to sort of look up this one thing, which is the num all the turbines, and look up this other information, which is what's the power consumption of the eight households, and it's gonna do like a database join to find you the right information. So this is actually where it starts getting really, really cool. 
Uh, I'll do one last one. Uh, so this one, you know, maybe not as cool, but this is super useful, which is we have a lot of international users on our product. And there's actually a very cool use case here, which is that when an international user uses the product, uh, it, it, knows to, it knows that they're asking a question that's only available on English web. So it actually automatically translates that to English. Uh, you know, find all the information on the English web and then translate it back to Chinese in this case to present it back to the user. Uh, so this is actually you know, super, super cool use case. I think like, probably simple technically, but it's actually providing a lot of value to users. Uh, of course, you, know, you can't talk about AutoGPT without talking about uh, all the uh, interesting failure cases. Um, what's cool about Omni is actually, um, so here's, like, here's some, um, I think this is like a, one of those trick questions people post on Twitter. You know, like how big a gorilla you need to fill to fling a car into space, and you know, you, you look at ChatGPT or Bing or whatever, they would just hallucinate some random answer. But for Omni, um, so this is kind of like maybe it's a failure case, but maybe it's a success. It actually just says I don't know. And like it, it, it give it, uh, you know, it tried really hard and just I don't know. And you know, and the last, I'll, I'll start. I'll end at the last one, which is that uh, uh, this, it can read PDFs. So here's a here's a cool case where somebody asked it to read a PDF. It can't read it. And then, so it's actually, this is actually just some random, random info, but I actually tried really hard. I actually tried to find the same information that would be in the PDF because I know it's the title of the PDF. So I actually tried really hard to find the information. Uh, so this is also pretty cool because these agents are actually quite persistent and they're, you know, and they use, they have a lot of good reasoning skills. So yeah, so that's the product. Um, you know, uh, so far lots of feedback and uh, it's a full company now. Uh, I'm hiring and we're also raising money. So if, you guys uh, could contribute to either, please let me know. Thank you, David. Um, we're gonna take audience questions. I think we've got time for one, maybe two questions. We, uh, anyone have a question? I can come to you. Uh, awesome, okay, one second here. Uh, raise your hand again, someone? Uh, okay, got you right up here. Uh, tell us your name and your question. Hi, David. Bob Mackling. Great presentation. Thanks. Good luck. Thank Looks you. Like you're off to a great start. Uh, question uh, is regarding the time. You had mentioned when you did that impromptu prompt, it's going to be five to 18 minutes, you know, versus like a pre trained model that gives you in seconds. What's taking place in order to take that long at this particular phase? And what would you need to do to speed it up so you can get, let's say, 30 second response? Yeah, so I mean, it takes so long because it, it is actually browsing the web on your behalf. And uh, what, what I realized is actually there is this huge market for sort of these asynchronous information products where people are actually willing to wait to get a, um, to get a more complete answer, which is sort of opposite of what you would see with like ChatGPT or Bing or, or you know, these other products. I'm actually quite surprised. So our users are actually asking us to make the reports more detailed and they want to wait longer because they want us to sort of go all sorts of direction and make it as comprehensive as possible. So we're actually, if anything, we're sort of going the opposite direction where, you know, maybe it's a 30 minute report, right? Which would still actually be a lot faster than if you were hire a human to do this research for you, but you know, it, and a lot cheaper, but you know, maybe, but now that's done by agent, we can automate it and we can send it to you every day. So that's actually the, so we actually kind of position ourselves as the opposite to these existing products. Awesome, thank you. I got one more question. We're gonna try and keep it a little faster here so we can move on. All right, thank you, David. Um, so one quick question is, what are some of the interesting feature requests you've seen and what do you think about focus on specific vertical versus just a broad tool that gives general answers? Uh, interesting feature requests, let's see. Um, I mean, we have, I mean, I don't, I don't know if any one of them is particularly like surprising. There's a lot of data export requests. There's a lot of support for, extra, for new sources, PDFs, videos, whatever. Uh, I think there's, a, there's just a lot of demand for people you know, that wants to you know, be able to uh, ingest a large amount of content as they know is true, right? Whether it's on the internet or it's on the intranet. Um, and that sort of leans into where this product is going, which is this is a B2B SaaS product. And, uh, and, you know, and what we're, the market we're targeting is really and, or the persona we're targeting is really everyone who works in BD, right? Because those are the people who does a lot of these sort of manual research on competitors and products and reviews, you know, whatever. Uh, so anyone that works in BD is the ideal customer for this product. 
Awesome. Thank you, David. Thank you.